Career longevity is a particular problem for rock musicians who may experience a quick rise and fall in popularity as a result of rapidly changing trends. The unusual few musicians who do survive long term are often praised for their remarkable ability to repeatedly produce music and recreate themselves. Whether you are a musician or in what some people refer to as the industry, or whether you are just a fan at a civilian job, sooner or later you will be retiring. Retirement may be a result of a whole bunch of factors, age, the pandemics, health issues that are personal, a disappearing job, a lack of work in the economy can lead some people to retire. I don't know when there is a lack of music, is it down to the ability to make the music or the complete, uh, somebody goes uh, freezes on, co on talent and uh, can't uh, do anything anymore. Well, that is what we are going to be analyzing for some of our musicians here and those that are in the arts industry on how they manage and what exactly should be done to ensure that most of them can actually live very comfortably. Jeff Ekongot is a music analyst and he's joining us this morning. A warm welcome to the program. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, Andrew Kagwe, the usual suspect, is an arts <laughs> journalist with the Daily Monitor and uh, he has been around covering these issues quite about and uh, no doubt you know how these things go. Uh, yeah. Let me just ask a general question. When we hear retirement, rarely do we f picture musicians into this. Because me, I would believe if somebody can sing, mm -hmm. where would you retire if you can sing? I've seen musicians sing up to the 90. We have uh, Kenny Rogers, mm -hmm. he's done music. We have uh, Oliver Motokuzi here in Africa, did music until he was called by the Lord. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't expect retirement for musicians, but it's a reality that, of course, has to be embraced. If you don't mind, let's give our very first guest, Jeff Ekongo, an opportunity to get us underway. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I agree. Retirement sometimes is not very clear for musicians. It doesn't look as obvious uh, as uh, mainstream, uh, uh, the mainstream employees, people in the, in the corporate world. But yes, there's a, a, a different model of retirement for musicians. Uh, there's, there's two ways to look at it. There's uh, retirement uh, from active performance, uh, but uh, your career can continue without an active performance. So a lot of musicians uh, uh, explore uh, options that are available to them in, uh, post active performance because that's the one that's most engaging. And that's the, one that, that's the reason most people plan for retirement, a time when you can no longer use your physical energies. Uh -huh. So that's right. uh, I've seen uh, they have been, uh, the old music industry had, was handling it very differently, but the current and the future music industry it has created a whole range of new opportunities. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, the music industry is an ecosystem which relies on um, uh, several other industries that uh, support it. That's right. And uh, all these industries are opportunities for artists to invest. Uh, for example, in the US music industry, all, all, all the major top rappers are now shareholders in many brands, mm. uh, including uh, liquor brands, and, and the same could happen for our musicians here. Um, then uh, there's the music itself, uh, post-live uh, performance uh, musicians uh, now have an, a huge opportunity to start uh, thinking of how their fans can continue consuming. The opportunity here is that in the past, uh, the radios and the TV stations dominated uh, playlists and the control of what audiences listen to. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is changing because there's uh, the, the, the control of what is listened to is going back to the fans. Uh, because of the DSPs such as uh, you know Spotify, YouTube, mm. uh, they're giving fans an opportunity to have more control. What the opportunity is here is that now you don't have to listen to the latest music only because in the past the radio is mostly focused on the latest music. But now even old music has an opportunity to st remain alive for a very long time. It's the reason actually the, the global industry uh, is now changing direction in terms of what they are ac acquiring. For example, 80% of the world's music is owned by the top three, what they call the majors, mm -hmm. the top three companies, that is Sony, Wana, Universal. And, and uh, in the past, they were signing the, the, the latest 
but now they are focusing on to acquiring catalogs mm -hmm. of the classics. Why? Because the fans now have control over what they play. So they can, a, a fan can decide to stream the same album for weeks <laughs> back to mm -hmm. back. Yes, right. And if you, if you want to survive uh, uh, past life, your live performance days, you need to create good music today so that people have a reason to listen to it again and again long after you, you're, you're on stage. But also, too, there's many other opportunities. Uh, for example, those who are no, no longer relying on, uh, on being booked because they are the trending artists can also move into these, uh, another space where semi-retired artists tend to s focus on, like they, they tend to get into cover bands. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you go, for example, to a hotel, mm -hmm. you don't go to a hotel pl thinking, oh, I'm going to see the specific artist. You go to a nice place to just uh, have a good time. Yeah. And then you find and most you of these hotels. Band, exactly, you find a, a good band yeah. playing good music. Mm -hmm. So if you are a semi-retired artist, and you have a, a cover band or, and, or you, you are performing at such places, you can have a long career going on. I remember like Tony Senkebeje, mm -hmm. they were performing in hotels for years. You would not find them advertised on posters, but when you went to the five-star hotels, you'd always find them there doing oh, okay. it. And they, they can sustain themselves for many years, mm -hmm. uh, long after people think that they, yeah, they have retired. They've gone off the stage. Yes. Ah, quite interesting mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. an eye-opener, no doubt about that. I'm sure Andrew Kagwa, you do agree entirely. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, of course, uh, you know, the funny thing about music is uh, it's a very difficult conversation to start with an artist, especially when they're at their peak and you're telling uh -huh. them that uh, you're not going to be hot forever. That's like right. I've had that conversation with people and some of them refuse to talk to me for weeks because <laughs> 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 because You've I told them the something truth. like, yeah. Because yeah. uh, at the sight of it, you're thinking, I can write music. Mm. I can probably produce because these days people are multi-talented. Right. And in your mind, you think you can be hot forever. You think you can improve. Mm. But the thing about music is, uh, is music is very personal to the person that produces it and then it's very personal to the person that consumes it. Mm. Like today people wake up and like your, the bad song you did when you're starting out because it spoke to them differently. Mm. And then they will not like the new song where you put a lot of energy, the production is better, like the video is better, you think you wrote better than you used to write, That's probably right. you even got a better writer to write for you. Mm but someone listens to it and it doesn't work for them, like what you did when you had nothing is what speaks to them. Like it's the funny thing about music, but uh, yeah, time comes when people are no longer interested that much, not because you're a bad artist, not because you're a bad creative, but they've somehow moved on yeah. and you somehow still need to work. One, it's not a conversation Ugandans usually have and mainly because we pick the wrong examples to look up to. Mm. Like the people we looked up to when we were starting, okay, when we were growing up, are people that came and stayed here for 10 years, like Camillion Bebe Kool and Bobby Wine came and kind of did it for 10, 20 years. Mm. So every kid that's coming out thinks like, probably I can actually do it like them. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that's yeah. very problematic already. <laughs> they created a model that is not, is not really sustainable for everyone. It's, it's, it's quite, for a few. They did it mm. and it worked for them, but it's hard to tell an artist that not everyone can actually can, do it like yeah. that. Even when you look at industries like the US, like you will find the Jay-Z, the Kanye, but there are many rappers that came around and we can't even remember they mm. came through throughout the past 20 years. So at times it's so hard to start a conversation with a Ugandan artist where you tell them, you might not be the thing in five years. Okay. All right, that's interesting. You, you, you speak about the aspect of longevity and uh, when you cite Chameleon, Baby Cool and uh, Bobby Wine for the uh, case of Uganda, that one is quite, everyone relates very easily yeah. with that. And uh, that's a conversation that is also, uh, <laughs> it's a conversation on its own to mm -hmm. speak about that. But when it comes to structures and the ecosystem like Jeff talked about, it's elaborate in the West, mm -hmm. and it 
basically everyone plays into what is available, uh, the ability to collaborate with brands and establish far more uh, significant streams of income away from your performances and uh, the music itself. So that later you, people relate to you, especially when it comes to shareholding on the premise of the foundations of your music. And they're like, oh, I think this is a good guy and uh, we can deal with him, we can even give him shares. But when it comes to structures in Uganda or in Africa, that's a bit problematic. I don't mm -hmm. know whether there is any effort that is deliberate to ensure that this kind of arrangement works for these musicians. Are companies in the industry mm -hmm. able to collaborate or even accommodate that conversation that I can, for example, have so and so as part of our branding, but in the long term, they have equity? Uh, I, I would choose to go first because he's, okay. he's partly from the establishment. So. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, no, don't take it like, off. Like, I would say, unfortunately, mm. uh, I don't know if it's something that that the industry did to itself. Mm. Uh, besides the companies that are directly working with the industry, besides those that are directly interested, the other people that are making money, even if they are making money because of the music industry, are not trying as much mm. to put their money in the industry, even if it's via music or even if it's putting that money to artists, even if it's just putting the money to someone as a as a, an ambassador mm. of a brand. Mm. Most people are not looking at, at Ugandan music like that. And um, at times you, you do not really blame them because when you have conversations with them and they are telling you we are investing about $20 million to launch this brand and we are thinking, can we risk $5 million on a Ugandan artist ensuring that this artist will, at, will attract his audience to mm -hmm. come to us and we make that money back? Like they, they think about it and they do not really see how it works. At times, you do not even blame the artists who are very, very small market. Yeah, a very small market indeed. Uh, like I do not know if the people that love Chameleon can help a company make back five million dollars. Like from where? Can you be more specific on that? What do you mean when, is it a case of buying the like brand if, I, if I invested mm. five million in Jose Chameleon, mm -hmm. he, and I'm the brand investing in him, That's right. he's my brand ambassador. Like, can he sway his audience to buy my brand and I make five million or more back? back. Like, at times you will blame it on the artist, but you're thinking, <coughs> like, where are you going to get five million from Uganda? <laughs> like, you have one city that functions. Like one city. The capital. So <laughs> that looks like it's functioning. That like looks it. like it's functioning. So yes, at times we can blame the brands, at times we can blame the artists, but like the state of us <laughs> as a country. <laughs> I, I, think, I think we need to yes, look at please. it from a purely business perspective. Uh -huh. From a purely business perspective, uh, uh, let's look at the more developed economies in mm. comparison to <laughs> Uganda. Uh, usually as an artist you bring some kind of brand equity but if you bring it to an already established company it, it needs to also be put on a weighing scale to see how, how much value you're bringing in comparison for you to start demanding you know actual stake actual equity mm -hmm. now the model that w tends to work uh, uh, is the one that where they sign up as brand ambassadors for a season and then they, they, they are let go. Yeah. But in, in other markets where it's beginning to really work, where the artists tend to get a real stake, they, they tend to target startups. Mm -hmm. Because uh, startups usually have not invested so much yet, and yet the brand of an artist can help to actually uh, jumpstart the, 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 these businesses, mm -hmm. the, the brands. Uh, I, I remember, for example, Chameleon tried to start to have a phone of his own. Yeah, yeah, really. uh, yeah. The problem is our artists haven't yet understood their pure business side. That's why I said, let's look at it from a pure bus okay. business perspective. Yeah. Now, they don't understand that, that world. And then uh, in, in developed markets, they have a buffer in between. They're called VCs, the venture capital firms. Yeah. You, you, they, they will handle 
the investors. So even if a, an artist brought their brand in, into, onto the table, they would value it in some form and then uh, uh, handle the rest. Now, in our market here, an artist would have to really play a bigger role uh, to, to bring their brand into a startup, and then they would have to follow through. Yeah. Uh, for example, if, you, if an artist decides to support, uh, say, a liquor brand or a beverage brand, yeah. it would be great if they can go with that brand to every single concert they go to yeah. and actually support sales, not just um, uh, marketing campaigns. Because uh, when a brand is young, they badly need both the, 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 brand pres the growth of the brand, but they also need sales. Yeah. And, and brand artists can, can deliver both. And then at some point, hand that over to their business arm to take care of that. However, the, the, the low-hanging fruit that artists can tap into is the ecosystem itself. Mm. The ecosystem is, is big enough. For example, uh, let's look at uh, retirement for artists from two perspectives. There's retirement as we know it, which tends to happen as you get older. Mm -hmm. And then there's, re there's forced retirement. We also yeah. look yeah. at that. Yeah. 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 Forced retirement is when, for example, you have one hit wonder and suddenly people don't care anymore. Yeah. 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 Sure. <laughs> so you have retired <laughs> without warning. <laughs> or, yeah, they your fans, your fans, your music yes, music. your yeah. fans retire you. So to tap into that, and sometimes think, it has that, nothing that's to what happens most of the time. Yeah, sometimes it has nothing to do with what you've done. You're still there. Your music is still great, uh, but for some reason the trends shift and they are no longer on you. Mm. And no matter what you do to release new songs, they just don't care. Yeah. So what makes more sense is for artists to look at the immediate ecosystem. If you're a great artist, you have talent, you can get into production, you can become a producer, you can start a record label and support other artists, you can become a promoter, you can, the ecosystem is huge. Uh, usually you use that knowledge that you had anticipated to, 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 to use for your career. If you see if it's not working, the fans are not responding, go and tap into other people and support them. Sometimes the same knowledge works on another person fails to work on you. Yeah, it's true. like the, yeah. the old the adage on, on, on witchcraft. They mm say, -hmm. <laughs> which means for, <laughs> for some reason, the, witch, the, the, the sorcery of, of, of witches doesn't work That's for them. Cool. They can't get the same wealth. So sometimes the artists can do that magic. I mean, look at guys like Benon. Benon, for some reason, I think he got into an early retirement, yeah. but he's doing great as, an, an, a, as a record label owner. Yeah. He's also brought great artists for us, you know, the Azawis, yeah, the Vinkas so. of this world. They, they've done a great job. So yes, artists have many other opportunities, depending on the context, whether it's early retirement or <laughs> late retirement. I think it all comes down to knowing to knowing that it has actually happened, like the retirement has actually happened. Yes, I, and, and I agree. Most, <laughs> most times, but they, they, pe people don't like to uh, recognize the inevitable. The inevitable is usually things like death, taxes. Yeah. They say death mm -hmm. and I mean, taxes. For example, if, if you began <laughs> and talking retirement. about death, people look at <laughs> People you start the, thinking, why? What, it's just a bad omen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we should be in, be in a position where you can confidently and, uh, you know, rightly talk about it stuff like that because it's going to happen anyway Be because one, one of the things like when you when you talk about Benon and mm -hmm. um, one of the things I've noticed about him when you talk to him is that uh, he's very very comfortable being on the sidelines and letting uh -huh. other people take the shine yeah sure if you've dealt with many of our local artists you will understand that that is something that is so hard for many of them to just step aside mm -hmm and totally like, so and let someone else another individual take the take shine, the shine yeah. so so that moment when you have to realize that uh that maybe the journey is almost done for me mm -hmm. but i can use my influence to actually hand the stick to someone else and then of course you you talked about being a one hit one and one thing i've learned about being famous is that fame doesn't rub off <laughs> like, because <laughs> I've seen it with the US, how how people came, released one a one one song, tried to release another one, and it didn't and work, well. and somehow got into broadcasting, mm. and they did phenomenally well. Uh, today, literally, many of the bo the podcasters used to be rappers, mm. and they are doing amazing thing on the on their podcast, but the rapping didn't work out. But today, we know them for podcasting. That's so. Right. Now, those transitions are very significant, is especially at individual level. But is it down to the fact that uh, artists in Uganda don't even have a structure, for example, in terms of administration and business arms? 
so it's difficult for them to even get to terms with the fact that a transition is going to happen and if, if it happens in any particular way this is how I handle it uh, I agree uh, the, the systems or the structures within the industry tend to help um, like if you see in the established industry uh, they, 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 they support the decisions you make yeah. uh, in, a, in a market like where ours where, where these things are just beginning to take shape that that can contribute to uh, your success or failure yeah. but usually the, the, the other big thing to, to notice from day one is to understand how this whole industry works uh, there, there's two kinds of understandings. There's the, the kind where you know music is the end goal, and then music is the means to the end goal. Mm. So when you do music as a means to your end goal, you know that music is supposed, it's like the key that is going to open other opportunities for you. That's right. Now, when you don't recognize that, that it's the key, you tend to stick to the key, you get to the door, you spend time there mm -hmm. on the door. <laughs> but if you know that this, this career, this one hit, and the next one, the next one, each one of them is a key opening opportunities, then the next thing you'll be doing is trying to know, so which one can I open with this one? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've got an, an opportunity for another one. Mm -hmm. Can I use this to open another opportunity? Like, for example, partnerships uh, to open new ventures, to mm -hmm. get yourself into so many other things. Be for every key you get, every hit you get is like a key that opens new relationships, mm -hmm. new business partnerships, new ventures you can get into. So if you do it if from that perspective, I mean, look in the U.S., artists like Nas, artists like Chameleonaire. Chameleonaire had like one hit, yeah. and, but today he's one of the, the richest rappers mm -hmm. because he, he used that one key to, in, to create these, in, these networks within the business community that well, so open doors for him to invest in many big companies that are okay. now big. Mm, I forget, when you talk about that one, he, I forget the rhyme, that particular song. Is it the one that is? Uh, 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 yes, the that's the one. The hey, <laughs> yes. you know, yeah. stuff like that. that yeah, but, 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 but you see, <laughs> just, just to add on what he said, mm. like when it comes to music being the key, uh, truth is, there is that, that, that thing we usually do not tell artists, and many of us are guilty of it. The thing is, most people do not want to pay for music. Like most music consumers do not want to pay for music. They want to pay for music, yeah. They want to consume it for free because they believe mm. you'll make your money when they come at, for the concert. Mm. But unfortunately, not everyone has a lot of music that will enable them to do a concert. That's right. So. At the end of the day, music becomes that opportunity that opens other doors for you, mm. but does not usually make a lot of money. Just look at all the richest, richest rappers, richest artists. You notice that the richest people, all the artists that are billionaires, that's in the US, the richest artists in Uganda, mm. have all become rich not for singing, but for investing, investing for their money elsewhere. doing other things yeah. around either the business of music or elsewhere, but not for just singing. Okay. The, the star effect draws people towards you. Mm. Now, if you know that, oh, this has drawn all these people towards me, it's up to you to be smart enough to say, what can I do with this one? What can I do with this ah, one? Sure. How can I tap into? Look, look at how many rich people are, are, are drawn to artists because of that whole star, mm. star ah, shine yeah, effect. Yeah. You, the smart ones, tap into that to open doors and, uh, and get into the highest levels of society. Yeah. So it, that's, that's the whole trick uh, for, for figuring out retirement for artists. Okay. Uh, that speaks uh, very ably to people who understand that if I am an artist and I see the uh, quality of uh, management and organization of concerts that I do perform at and they, it's really poor, and then I realize that my music is waning, I can go into event organizing and being actually the guy who ensures that other artists do a good job in terms of the setup and stuff like that. Others have chosen to go into real estate, you know? Yeah. Although the dynamics there, if you're not a realtor, are also different. But if you're lucky, and uh, talking about luck, there's a musician in this country that many people believe is overly lucky <laughs> when it comes to his business. And uh, we won't shy away from that. Kenzo's music is not stellar, mm -hmm. in my own opinion. But there's something he does right that the others don't seem to do right. I don't know whether you have an opinion on that. We might share it and... Uh, what does he do right? What does he do right? <laughs> I think... <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you tell me. Uh, uh, let, me, let me just share a small bit. Okay. In, in the uh, modern uh, 
20 years ago, mm. uh, I worked with uh, MTV, and I learned a thing that sometimes the, the best artists don't do, don't tick all the boxes that mm. are needed to succeed in the industry. I remember we had an opportunity that time to reorganizing the industry in Africa, and uh, so many heads came together to decide mm -hmm. would we put out there to, you know, to take on the rest of the world. And when that discussion happened, we got into a vote. There were different representatives across Africa. And many of those guys voted for Chameleon. Uh, and and oh. MTV was willing to invest in Chameleon and introduce him to the global network of artists. That's but right. Chameleon was very disorganized. And he didn't, you know, uh, we, I tried to set up meetings with him. He would come very late or he would not show up at all. And then uh, that window was just about two weeks. And then after that, they say, you know what, let's move to the next one. And the next thing was uh, Two-Face. Uh, two wow. and, and sometimes it's not about uh, being the best. Some, I, I remember the same incident happened during around Palm Awards. Mm. Uh, Obsessions was not very talented as a group, mm -hmm. but they were very organized. Yeah. Uh -huh. They were very organized. Sure. So sometimes if you have great management and you're very organized, you, you know, for example, I've seen him win so, so many awards. Sometimes to win awards, you don't need to be, they don't need to look for you. Mm -hmm. Most awards, you, you have to know the process. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So probably his team is great at, at scoring the internet to, to find all the processes for the hundreds of awards that are out there. Mm -hmm. And they apply, they submit, right. it's like the Grammys. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the, the Grammys is a process that lasts about four or five months and usually Ugandan artists don't care. If you find a top Ugandan artist and ask them, do you know the process for getting a Grammy nomination? They don't. Mm -hmm. But when you have the right management, they'll do the homework, yeah. fill the forms, apply, what, get network and make all the things happen. I think artists like Kenzo have a great team. Mm. He, he really needs to give kudos to his manager because they do all of that homework, no matter how good you are. If you don't do this legwork of filling the mm -hmm. forms and, and trying to find all these things, it, they are a lot and they are humongous. It's too much work in the background that needs to be done to, to connect the dots. Okay. So I believe his team is doing all of this work and people uh, tend to focus on the artist. And, and, right. and, and I think he also knows the importance of, uh, you know, that publicity that comes with purpose. Uh, you know, I know it from the film industry. Very many people will try to be in as many festivals mm. and because very quickly. The more, the more festivals you're in, mm. is the more people look at you as a very capable director, as a person they want yeah, to work with. You're showing up all yeah. the time. So the fact that he's in all these awards, mm. a festival out there would feel like they need to work with an artist like Who him, is, yeah, because right. he has credibility, he has a following. Like the awards are more than just winning these things, but they throw you to the next level. Mm. All right, gentlemen, I'm afraid I'm out of time, and, uh, but no doubt this has been a very uh, interesting conversation. It emboldens our understanding of uh, exactly how many of our artists should be able to plan. Uh, but uh, if you don't mind, I have uh, 120 uh, broadcasting seconds for a wrap for each of you. So mm -hmm. if you can use 56. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in my view, mm. uh, artists need to do a lot of uh, prep work. They also need to wear so many hats. An artist's mm -hmm. career is like, it's like being a CEO, and then you have a whole company that you need to lead. Yeah. So you need to, um, you, let's not look at it from a narrow perspective of just a manager. You mm -hmm. have a whole team, you need accountants, you need all these people. If you appreciate that, then you can prepare seriously for your, the end of your career, mm -hmm. because you'll be, you know the, the, the huge task at hand for you. But if you look at it from a narrow point of view, oh, I just have to have talent. Uh, I'm sorry for you, then it, you, you're not hey, going to make it. Mm -hmm. mobile money. Yes. Uh, <laughs> personally, I could say, if you've been lucky as an artist to make a hit, a hit mm. is like a rope. Uh, you could use it to tie a goat and it grazes, or you could use it to commit suicide. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good So <laughs> just find the yeah. right way to use right your way hit. To use it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, when you speak about being a CEO, if you are an artist, Ensure that you delegate a lot of work so that people can be able to do their job. If the accountant says that we won't be booking this particular one because they do not meet our threshold, please accept it. Do not tell the guys paying up to give you the money via mobile money and not the account that has been provided by the manager. But ensure that you also do not micromanage your team because you might want to know exactly whatever is going on here and there. Yeah. 
that is all stuff that you should be putting up for reflection in order to improve how you do. That will do it for our Kickstarter. It's been a pleasure. Now let's go to Stephen Mbide. We would like, we would like to amplify the issue of the state of uh, roads across the country. And Kampala being the capital city, no doubt gets all the attention that it does. So when we go, when we return rather from the break, we shall be going to a section within Kampala that is in a really, really deplorable state. We shall be speaking to uh, Mayor Mulyanyama, and that will be a conversation that our very old man on the ground, Stephen Mbide, will be bringing us. So do stay with us. <laughs>